Welcome to Thursday, January 2nd. You're listening to the Day Weather Podcast. Well, as we go through the rest of this New Year's week, it's still going to be about two things, mountain snow and strong winds on the plains. Another round of significant snow fell over the mountains of Wyoming and Colorado last night. There are many areas in the highest mountains in northern Colorado and southern Wyoming that got over two feet of snow over the last 24 hours. We're going to continue to have off and on periods of snow in the mountains as Pacific waves are coming through a very strong jet stream. The jet stream wind is coming from the Pacific Northwest, Southeast, through the Central and Northern Rockies. And when you have these strong winds come at a near perpendicular or close to perpendicular angle to the Continental Divide, you tend to see, this time of year, really good snow in the mountains. It just basically drives that Pacific moisture, pushes it up slope into the mountains, and you get high country snow off and on. On the other side of the divide, you get the wind. Strong and gusty winds will continue to be found along and east of the Continental Divide for the course of the rest of this week and through the weekend. Today, the winds aren't going to be as bad. There's a bit of a lull. They'll still be there, but they won't be as bad. But Friday night through Saturday night will be another bout of high winds across the I-80, I-25 corridors of Wyoming. Also, the higher mountain passes of Colorado will see some wind and some gusty winds along I-25 even into Colorado this weekend will be a possibility. Now, east of the divide, we will get a bit of a Chinook effect. It's going to be pretty chilly today and Friday, but a bit of a Chinook will mean warmer conditions. In fact, some areas of eastern Colorado will be well into the 50s Saturday, 40s and 50s across portions of eastern Wyoming and western Nebraska. However, it's temporary because the next wave that comes in Saturday night through Sunday night will bring another chance of snow to the mountains, and it will be colder on the plains Sunday into Monday behind that system. Long-range trends show that there's a lot of winter weather coming to the lower 48 states through the rest of this week, through the weekend, and into the next couple of weeks. We have a very active jet stream pattern in the North Pacific that will send systems through about every two or three days across the western United States. The pattern favors the more significant snow to stay in the mountains. We don't see anything yet in the next week or so that would be significant with snow on the plains. Not saying it won't snow on the plains, but we don't see anything really heavy. But we see a high frequency of snow events over the next two weeks in the high country. So the snowpack will get a nice boost. We saw the snowpack retreat a little bit with that period of warm weather, that 10 days just before Christmas. But now we're starting to build up that snowpack again. And nothing but good news for skiers and snowmobilers over the next couple of weeks, the three weeks ahead, as the mountains will see plenty of new snow. Let's talk a little bit about how we wrapped up 2019 with the solar activity. We've been kind of keeping track of that. We did have a few sun spotless days at the end of 2019. So for 2019, we had 281 days of no sunspots. We have a tiny little new sunspot today, but it probably won't last. But we've had a few sunspots over the last week or so. But this, if you go and rank 2019, 2019 ended as the third quietest solar year in terms of lack of sunspot activity back to 1849. So this was a century level event in terms of very low solar activity. And as we have talked about in earlier podcast, that solar activity is something we're just beginning to get a grasp on in terms of how it may impact weather and climate. Only just in the recent decade have we really started to pay any close attention to how solar activity and activity that's off Earth could impact our climate and weather. It's quite intriguing. And as we go into 2020, we're likely going to be in solar minimum activity through probably at least March or April before the next solar cycle kicks into full gear. Some of the sunspots that we've had here over the last couple of weeks are sunspots with their magnetic polarity indicating that they are the start of the new solar cycle. However, the first three to four months of 2020 will likely be still in solar minimum category ranges. What's interesting about this year, 2019, that we just finished up, the years that were most similar were 1901 and 1913, and the years of 1911 and 1912. Those were very low sunspot years and low solar activity. And what's really intriguing, if we look back at the winter season of 1911, 1912, and 1913, we find that the coldest weather during those three winters 
was centered over the Western United States, which is exactly what's been happening so far this year. Winter season 2019 has been coldest in the central and western United States, warmest in the east. And that's exactly what happened back in 1911 to 1913. Thanks for listening to the Day Weather Podcast. We'll update you on Friday. Have a good Thursday.